Hello. Hi. We are back. We're back from Japan. We're back in New York. We're back from Tokyo. And we're back in New York. Yes. And uh, we came back with stuff. Uh, so one of the highlights for trips to Japan for us is that we get to go and buy sake. We get to buy a bunch of stuff that we can't get in the States. Uh, and then we get to come over here and, uh, well, drink it. So tonight we're gonna we got two of the bottles that we Brought picked back. up during the trip. Most of the time when we buy sake in Japan, actually, you know, I would say it's fifty fifty mm -hmm. of sake that we have tried and liked, and then stuff that we were picking up at random. Would you say? I think so. And then this is like this actually is a, perfect example. Exactly, a perfect example. Speaking of segues, <laughs> this is one that we have not tried, and mm -hmm. this is one that we did sample. Yep. Uh, so we went to, and maybe may have seen, and if you haven't, uh, you should go in the archive and look at our trip to um, the Cebu um, Sake event, where we did try this. This is the uh, Tatanokawa, um, yeah, 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 that's it. Um, Cebu Shopping event. Yeah. That Let's was see. really a fun event. So the event was the last weekend that we were there? Yes. It was like May 23rd through the 30th. Yeah, I think we went on the 30th. Thing. And they had a partially, part of a floor of the shopping center. And they had, how many was it, 11, 13? It was like 13 or so. They came and they were sampling a lot of different sakes from their brewery. It wasn't just one or two. It was like a huge range yeah, for each one. I would say everybody had at least five or six. Uh, unfortunately for us, most of them were namas. Um, yeah. And although you can probably get away with taking namas back from uh, from Japan... It's a risky proposition, so um, yeah. we, we usually did not. But luckily, this one right here from Tatinokawa, the uh, Nyan, uh, Tate Nyan, I believe, or something like that. It's the, <laughs> their Nyan bottles. So basically, Tatinokawa has a brewery cat, and it's a uh, Tate-chan. And apparently the cat got lost and wandered into their offices, and the president uh, liked the cat, and now they have a cat. Um, they like the cat so much... But the cat has its own sake label now. Has a few. Yeah. This is volume three yeah. of the cat sake. This I, is... Uh, okay. I think we stumbled across one of them a few years ago, not realizing what it was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think see. I had volume one or two. At, yeah. At and then they had two that were there. That was pretty cool. Yeah. They are... The brewery is located... Which it's one is a Yamagata. Yamagata. Yeah. And these guys make... They, these guys have a lot of sake that's available in the States. Yeah, they don't just do the cat line. They have quite a few... Yeah, um, they're kind of famous for doing ultra low percentage, uh, ultra low percentage stuff. So they'll, they'll they have a sake that goes down to like eight percent milling. So it's basically dust that they that they brew with. Yeah. Also, if you are in Japan, this has some sort of line tie-in. <laughs> yeah, it does. I, I'm not sure if it's. I'm not sure if those are like if the. There's like a QR are, code. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe you can download some of these line stickers they're super cute the cat there's one where the cat has like a little sake bottle i like that i like the one that all right <laughs> this, this is really cute. a really good video guys I'm familiar with um and i've tasted it and it's delicious mm -hmm. this is um the yamamoto pure black I have not tasted this. Um, it's from Akita and uses uh, Akita uh, Komori rice, which is super tasty. Uh, it has that, that, there's like a certain note that a lot of like Akita sakes have. That's where they get it. Uh, it's really kind of like a, it's got a, uh, a little bit of a bounce to it usually. It's fun. It's a fun sake type, a fun rice type usually. So This one's yeah. kind of cool. It has the label, I guess you could say, like printed directly onto the bottle which is always pretty neat. And then even the back part is, like, all the information is printed on, which I don't see that very often. I think it's yeah, pretty cool. I, we love that when they do that. It's not, it, it's it's rare. Oh, it looks like they have, at the bottom for the <laughs> brewing time, it's the 2017 is printed on, and then there's a sticker that says five. So I guess, so I guess they make the bottles once a year, and then oh, the sticker on. This is pretty cool. Last this, is, this was done last month. I'm done. It's so old. When we bought it, it was, yeah, it's yeah, pretty cool. That's still very new. Um, Did you talk about where we got this one from? Um, so we got this one actually at the new uh, Ginza Six Shopping Center. It's directly um, across from the giant Uniqlo. If you go <laughs> to Ginza, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's like 
Mm. Super tall, beautiful Uniqlo, and it's directly across the yeah, street. Yeah, and it's in the place is in the B two. It's called uh, Imadaya, and they have it's a, kind of in the back. We yeah. made a circle or two before we finally found it, so yeah. it's definitely there. Make sure you you keep looking because it's really worth your time. It's very they cool. They have a huge sake. He told us how many they had. What was it? Like three hundred? More? It was. I think it was over three hundred. Um, and uh, the, the, the staff there is very knowledgeable, very helpful, and they speak a little bit of English. Actually, they speak above average English, I would say. Yeah, they speak a lot. Like, yeah. We were able to communicate uh, a lot of our interests, mm -hmm. and he was kind of helping us through the store. We got a few bottles from there. Yeah. It was pretty neat. We always, uh, we, whenever we find a, a new place like that, we like to try to get a few bottles, which is great. And this is, you know, this is a, the results of that. This one I was drawn to because we have had a sake in the past, that was colored black. They had bamboo shoots that they like left in it during part of the process. Might have been like bamboo filtering or something like Some, that. Something Not about sure. bamboo was left, was like, you know, part of the process and it made the sake black. And so I saw, I was like, oh, I wonder if that's what it is. And then of course we looked at it more and it's not, but it sounds really cool. <laughs> and I thought we really wanted to try. Yeah. Uh, so let's do, let's just start with the, with the Yamamoto. Mm -hmm. Some we have, kita sake. We have some pairing snacks. <laughs> I have cheese crackers and some strawberries. Yeah, we realize that we never really eat on the show. We just kind of drink a lot. Yeah, it's always fun to figure out how pairing works, I think. Yeah. Um, these are pretty simple flavors, I guess. And usually goes with a lot of things, so. I agree. So, this is, again, a Yamamoto. Um, oh, it smells really good. Yeah? Ooh, yeah. It does. It smells really fruity. All right, let's try it. Right? You smell like a lot of fruit, or is that just the strawberries I'm smelling? No, no, it, it's it's fruity smelling. Yeah. Uh, it's apparently only a plus two. It's milled to 50%, and uh, it's a Junmai Ginjo. Wow. I feel like it tastes almost effervescent, and I guess that must mean, mm. that must be from how fresh it is. I think, if I recall correctly, I think he told us it was a little bit fizzy mm. when we bought it. I think he was trying to express that, but we were like, is it sparkling? He was like, no, 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 not sparkling, just a little bit. So I would say the flavor from this one comes at the beginning, and then it's just like a mellow lingering mm. of that initial... It's nice, though. Yeah. I mean, it's not as poppy and pow in your face as I, as it smells like it's going to be. Yeah, the smell is really, really fruity, really nice. I think that the... Yeah, I think the flavor is more mellow. The flavor is a lot more smells. mellow, a lot more subtle. I, it's, I mean, in general, this is great. This is wonderful. I would uh, like to sip this all the time. Yeah, I think that this is a good sipping sake. Although I think it could also pair well with food because it's not too strong on its own, so it wouldn't really overpower anything. Mm. We should uh, test that in the future a bit. I'm going to test it with a strawberry. Oh, we can test that in the present. I forgot we have food today. Mm. Mm. These are some really ripe strawberries. For the record, I really love strawberries, <laughs> so I'm like, oh, strawberries and sake? This is the greatest day ever. <laughs> Ooh, I love it. I think the, the fruit flavor is so much stronger after having that. You're absolutely right. Wow. It is really fruity after you have wow. some fruit. Who knew? It's fruitier with fruit. Actually, I was worried it was going to do the opposite and that the and fruit would make it, make it bitter, but oh, it's great. No, so yeah, originally the first flavor we got, this is right out of the fridge, so it was very cold, was just like a pop and then just very mellow, very lingering nothing really came to the surface. It was just very pleasant, but with the strawberry and then the sake, it is rounded. I think it really... I would also say that with you know, with the fruit, the fruitiness of the scent really... I, I remember earlier I said that, the, that it, it, the taste didn't match the scent. Now it does. Yeah. Yeah, it does. It really does. That's really nice. That's really nice. That's a, that's a special bottle. I like it. Yeah. And it, it's a great... Like, right now, I'm thinking... <laughs> I wish we were able to get this more because it would be a perfect summer sake, like mm. to be able to like sit on the porch or to take to picnics and like have your fresh like summer strawberries and your blueberries and uh, that would be really nice. Mm. That's wonderful. That was nice. Yeah. Um, Do we have any um, ability to check comments? Um, I don't think I have it on this on the laptop necessarily, uh, or on the tablet rather, but. Mm. Alright, I'll try it with cheese pasta. <laughs> John does not like cheese, so the cheese pasta is fine. Um, I don't know if you guys are aware, but uh, I do not eat cheese. Period. Well, 
I will accept Parmesan in some situations. But generally speaking, I'm mm. not a fan of No, not so not much so with the cheese puffs, no. Not, I'm shocked, really. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew? Well, pairing sake with cheese is like a really interesting aspect that's being explored a lot right now, especially here in New York. There was just a great uh, wine or sake and cheese pairing event. Mm -hmm. At the Japan Society. Very cool. Unfortunately, we were not able to go. I think that was while we were gone or right when we yeah, got back. Yeah, that was while we were gone, and then there was another event when we got back that we were just... Apparently, I should have gone, and I would have learned more about cheese and sake pairings. Yeah. But uh, I took number one. Not so much. Definitely with the fruits. Definitely a sweet... Like, oh, great. Okay, we got a like, but I don't think we have any comments yet. And we can't see, because I'm just remote desktoping into the computer that's running this mm. whole thing. Uh, oh, by nice. the way, and that's... um. That's an Ocala right there wow. on the back, my, <laughs> the back of my tablet. Um, they have stickers, um, and if I go to a st and buttons and buttons, if I go to a tasting event and you give me a sticker, I'm gonna I'm gonna use it. <laughs> he is all about the stickers. I'm all about stickers. I'll put them on my I put I have them all, like, all over my uh, my uh, business card case. Um, I have them on this. It's, yeah, I like stickers. Stickers are fun. I should put an Aramasa sticker on here. I think I have another one. Mm. Let's see. So yeah, this was a really tasty. Really nice sake. I'm I'm impressed. I'm going to yeah, really have to like savor this one and drink it slowly. This was nice. I'm really interested in. Uh, have we had anything else from their line? There's only one. I'm not. I don't think I've had anything else from these guys. I could be mistaken, but that's cool. I'm pretty sure that's a. Yeah, you know, one of the nice things about being uh, about being over in Japan is that you get there's so many different labels, and you're like, uh, have I even heard of these guys before? Like, and and you. You might have had like 200 sakes during a trip, or in our case, like I would say, in our in our case, like over two years, we probably had like what 400 different sakes, uh, and there were still breweries that we um, no, never I mean, heard of. In two years of traveling, I would say well over 400, simply because last year we went to the Pia Sake event, yeah, and yeah. that's a event where they give you like a little tasting cup and you walk around and you do like just like a sip of. A hundred? How many did they have? At least. I think I went through a hundred that day and I didn't have everything. Yeah, so that's a hundred right there. And then when we, whenever we go out to Izakaya's or sake stores or uh, uh, sake bars specifically, we love, well, I specifically love doing tasting sets. Because mm. I just want to try as much as possible. I want to, like, learn about, like, I'll ask for sets from specific regions so I can kind of learn about the region, or I'll ask about, like, specific flavor profiles it's just i want to have as many different kinds as i possibly can mm -hmm. and then of course we'll get different tasting sets so i would say well over it. yeah there's a lot of times we'll go to a place and get two separate tasting sets and have six different sake yeah, easily and then just go like i'll do my three i'll taste her three and vice versa and so since they're just like the tasting sets you know they're just like little sets so you can have like two of those so that's yeah 12 right there and one sitting mm -hmm. it's a yeah. good way to try a lot of things and there's a lot of places in the states that do uh, that do tasting sets. I know I know places here that do it. I know places in Boston that do it. I know places in California. I even know a place in San Antonio that does tasting sets. Yeah. But to speak to not always knowing if you've had it, there is of course because you try so many at once, forgetting like which ones you've had and what they're from. But I also am starting to realize that in Japan, a brewery will make many different labels, different styles, different types of different rices or whatever and do totally different labels for each of their different styles. For example, like, this cat <laughs> line, I guess? Uh, yeah, well, series? I guess it's series. We'll call it series. It's not thing. the only thing that's offered, and the other labels are completely different. Like, you would never think that they go together, whereas what is imported to America, I think probably by design, they always keep the same themes for their brewery, I think, for, like, brand recognition. So, oh, yeah. like, for example, like, Namubijan, I think, has the most diverse set of labels for each of their types here. I think, well, I think, I think it's a, a lot of, uh, a lot of breweries will do, like, weird, interesting lines. Um, and, and Namubijan, I think you're, you're kind of referring to that, that beauty, beauty series, series where they have those really artistically But the themes are still similar enough that you can recognize them together. And, of course, there's Desai, which is always a very similar, you can always recognize no matter which design it is, always like that. by the label. <laughs> and I think Intersake, in, like, uh, bringing them together, it always has, like, it has a recognizable feature so that for each time you have a new one, you're like, oh, I remember this from the other one that I had. Whereas in Japan, I don't think they do that as much. It depends. I mean, this, um, the, the Tatsunokawa 
you wouldn't realize this was Tante no Kawa unless you looked at the cap, really. Um, that, that has their their symbol on it. I guess, or, or if you yeah. like read the back. But if you're just like looking at this label and saying like, oh, there's a yeah. sake and it's got cats on the front, you it's not immediately going to be obvious who made it. Um, in fact, I don't think their their name is on the front of this at all. Um, so yeah. Speaking of neon, we should probably try that now. Yeah. When we were at the Cebu event, which is where we tried this one, mm -hmm. there was another one that I was surprised by. Oh, had a great segue, and now it comes back to me. Ah. The... Can't remember the name. Mm -hmm. Do it live. Yeah. The Hidachino one. Oh, all right, so... What's the brewery for the uh, that I do not know. Well, I have a pamphlet. So, while we were there, there was a section at the end where a woman had, like, a... Kind of like a cooler chest shelf sort of thing with a large plastic... Mm, mm. Device, yeah. I guess? And what it was is that their sakes were all, like, in little kegs inside of the cooler. And she was tapping them and filling bottles right there in front of you and then letting you sample them right out of the keg. And if you bought one, she would fill it right there for you for you to take home. Yeah. Very it was, cool. It was kind of like a sake grawler almost. Uh, here um, it is. This is the yeah. Thing. And it is the, the sake brewery that makes Hitachino. Hitachino. Nest Fear, which we get here in New York. I'm sure you've seen. They're very popular here. But they have like a huge line of sake as well. And we were like so over the, like so overwhelmed and excited about this tapping thing that <laughs> we made a couple of rounds and went to have lunch and came back before we realized that that was what they did. Very cool. Here, maybe you can get more out of this than I can. There you go. Thanks. So that's another example. Yeah, I believe we did get a little bit of that on our um, on our live feed. I don't think we got her actually doing the... I do have a video. Um, oh, you do? I do have a little oh, video. Okay. Yeah, it's going to go up soon. We didn't want to overwhelm everyone with everything, so that'll be kind of trickling out. It might be Koda Wadi. I'm not sure. And make sure you follow us on Instagram, maybe, maybe too. Not. Oh, yeah, Koda Wadi. Aha! Uh -huh. I'm assuming that's... I think that's what right. Yeah, Kyuchi? Kyuchi? Maybe. If we're wrong, uh, correct us. Yeah, let we, us love, know. we love being corrected when we're wrong because that's the only way we learn. One thing that Hidachino does that is very interesting, one of the things that they do is very interesting, that first caught our eye, was their red rice ale. Mm. Uh, I actually like that, even though I'm not a beer drinker. Speak more about that. Wow. Well, um, I'm not a beer drinker. I usually don't like beer at all. The uh, red rice ale does incorporate um, some sake rice into their process and it's a tasty uh it's a tasty beer pretty cool yeah now um i did pour us the the, the neon uh junmai daiginjo uh in our nice brooklyn kura glasses or you know Ooh. repping those guys a little bit today it smells really good and oh man wow yeah <laughs> how would you describe the smell vibrant it's like fruity and exciting it's just so um Wow, I'm just excited to taste it. Also, texture-wise, this one looks a little thicker. Yeah. yeah, a little viscous. It looks a little. Well. Yeah, it looks a little thicker than the other one does. Well, according to my notes, my, they're the same, right? They're both two. My sake oh. notes. This is a minus one, oh. whereas the other one was plus two. Oh, not the same. At all. Yeah. So, and that's where your viscosity in the sake is going to be from its um, from its sake meter value. All right. Oh man, <laughs> this is um, this is this is my kind of sake. <laughs> I would say I was gonna say it's very mellow. There's not really a surprise at the beginning or at the end. It's very smooth the whole way throughout, which is exactly mm. the kind of sake that you love. That makes sense. And it's a little fruity, which I also don't really actually. It's it's pretty fruity. It's actually kind of very fruity. Can you try with the strawberries? Um, yeah, I, I've been cheating a little bit. I've been just eating the strawberries. <laughs> I really like strawberries. Hmm. Insider sake tip, strawberries and sake. A plus. Mm. Yeah, if anybody wants to make like a sake sangria, maybe strawberries is the answer. I've seen, I saw, we we so we went to uh, the Quran sake market, kind of, um, during uh, one of our days in Japan. We took we took a lot of live video there. You can see it on the site, and um, they had a like a sake sangria, but it looked like it was mostly like pineapples and stuff like that in it. I did not get to try it 
I was. Busy. It was like I think lemons or oranges. Yeah, I was, I was, oh, I think it was that weird lemon orange hybrid thing that we ran into. Mm. When we were at Sour, it was that same. It was kind of like an orange, mm. but it's like a Japanese orange. I don't know. I thought new, it was just like lemon new, water. New, new summer orange or something like that? Oh, yeah. Some I kind of actually do orange. not. This does not go well with the strawberries. You don't think all. so? No. I think it, 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 it's getting bitter to me. I, I thought it was okay. It, it's not like. I mean, the. the um, the Yamamoto, I actually forgot the name for a second there. The Yamamoto, I think, really was like perfect. Like with it, like it complemented it well yeah. and enhanced it. I feel like this is detracting a little bit. Mm. If I eat cheese, I'll try a cheese cracker. Mm. This one is just so light. It's so smooth and light, mm. and it's just very. This is yeah. Well, I mean, I don't think I think I would just like. This is like the ultimate. Jean sits on the couch and and sips this while watching TV or, or what have you. That's probably a good way to enjoy the flavor of it, since it is just such a light, mellow, smooth taste. Maybe harsher foods would definitely lose. Definitely overpower it. Yeah. I mean, if I'm, if, I'm losing, if I'm losing this to strawberries... Well, strawberries are a pretty bold flavor. Very mm -hmm. sweet. But, I mean, I'm sure if you just did, like, a light fish, um, that, that would go it. well. Mm -hmm. If you did, like, sushi. I might do it. Sushi. Like, a, like a, yeah, a light tuna or something. Whitefish, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Yellowtail. That might do it. Maybe, yeah. Like vegetables. We're learning maybe. about pairing slowly. We're trying. It turns out the secret to pairing is to just eat a bunch of different types of food with the sake and see what tastes good. Well, that sounds like fun. Another thing that we did that was very <laughs> fun, if you missed it, we did some 100 yen kombini snacks. Yeah. The weirdest but most edible looking ones that I could find at like two in the morning, uh, paired with just kind of a smattering of our collection that we had at the hotel room at that time. <laughs> it was pretty fun. We have links on both Instagram and do we have a cross It's on Facebook. Facebook. I don't, yeah, it's on Facebook. I don't think it's on the YouTube yet. I need to upload that to YouTube. That, so we, we did a, a live tasting and then we compiled our results at the end. So you can check for both those both ways. But what was involved to get you intrigued, <laughs> snack-wise, we had... Bloomin' Onions chips yeah. that were kind of shaped like Bloomin' Onions, like little claw little circles. Claws. And we had, oh, they were some kind of fondue. I thought they were chicken fondue. I was a little excited. It was fondue chips, right? Spoiler alert, it wasn't chicken. It was just regular fondue. It was just cheese fondue. I've never seen somebody do chicken fondue before. I hadn't either. I was very excited. <laughs> and then we had a popcorn that tasted like... Well, according to the package, it was like a red bean mochi kind of thing that we later were told by a friend of the site that it's a very specific like mochi style. It's like s only in May, I think they like blend. I don't know. You'll have to check it out. The short version is I didn't think it was great. <laughs> you can't spoil it. I gotta go check it out. But anyway, right. we paired those three snacks. Very weird. Blooming onions, fondue cheese, and like a very weird mochi red bean popcorn with one of the following. There was... Um, there was the uh, Hayakujuru G-Mid um, Junmai Ginjo, uh, which is very delicate. <laughs> a very delicate, very um, very nice sipping sake. I think we had had that one already open. We right? had that one already open. And then the second one was the... Uh, it was one of the one cups, wasn't it? It was the Hiroshima Carps... Oh, paper one cup and that, was that a, I had purchased at the train station yeah, for, that, I think, like 600 yen. That was a, a futashu, a regular sake. It was not graded. And mm -hmm. then the last one was the the Kyoto Mystery Juice Box Sake. Um, Again, we bought a, it at a train station. That was a Junmai Ginjo. That was actually a high quality It was sake. like a, a juice box. It was, pretty, it, was probably, it was pretty big. It was like this big, like a classic juice box. It had a... A spout well, for it was, it was. Yeah, we spout thought it was a straw, straw, and we realized later on it was actually like a spigot. <laughs> so our method was we went through a taste of the sakes, tasted all the different ingredients, and then paired them. And it seems like that's kind of the secret is you just got to taste stuff and yeah, figure taste it out. Yeah, taste stuff. Yeah, don't be afraid to taste stuff. There's no wrong answer. If you think it's delicious, then that's good. That's, you should do that. Mm -hmm. And if it's not, maybe it doesn't really matter. Maybe next time you try something different. <laughs> yeah. I think we get, we're, we want to do something on the show, which we haven't, we, we, we've been talking about it, and... Don't hold us to any of this, but um, I think it would be a lot of fun, and we'd be talking about like just getting getting some some foods and doing a live pairing at some point, and, 
at the very least, the reaction videos will be a lot of fun if we if we mess up. I mean, we're kind of starting that here. Baby oh, yeah, steps. this is baby steps. Maybe like, I'll probably do like, I want to get like a bunch of sake and then like chili. And then, just and then like fish maybe, and then like mesh. Maybe That's I just really want chili. Maybe we <laughs> should wait until Thanksgiving for that. That way we can have like a lot of different kinds of food. Mm. And then like, like you know, because mm. it would be really hard to make so many different kinds of food. Well, then we could do like one type of food and then four different kinds of sake with it. Oh. And just be like, which one of these sake skills best with turkey? You know, that's kind of a good idea. That's a good Thanksgiving idea. Ah. Yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, or you know, um, what else? Are we still live? Maybe yeah, we should be. <laughs> we're doing this live. We're doing it live. This is the behind the scenes. Yep, we're still. Um, yep, we're still live. Perfect. Yeah, oh, there you are. You're I'm fine. kind of keeping an eye over on the other screen, <laughs> and it went blank, so I wasn't sure. I think yeah, that 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 television, uh, that monitor just went to sleep. So, what other sake events did we get to? I feel like we did... We just did the one, the Seibu event this year, uh, at the, uh, in Japan this year. Mm -hmm. um, by the way, um, no, so normally, and I think we talked about this a little bit at the end of our last episode, normally we just kind of just do Tokyo, and we do Tokyo hard. Mm -hmm. um, and this year we tried something a little bit different, and we visited a bunch of different cities on the way. So we went to Fukuoka, we went to Hiroshima... We went to Osaka, and then we hit Kyoto, and finally got to Tokyo. And then we went to Niigata. Oh, and we did spend a day in Niigata. Well, in the sticks of Niigata. Not in Niigata City, but actually, we have got to visit Hakai-san Brewery. Um, we brought back our beautiful... We have a, we have a little, little trophy from our visit. <laughs> um, yeah, that was so fun. We was great. got a tour from our friend Timothy, who works at Hakai-san. And we got to see, like, the brewery itself and where they make the, the sake. And we got to kind of see each process. And then we got to go to the snow room, yes. which, if the you remember... The Yukimura was amazing! If you remember our video <laughs> where we did the white bottle, the Hakai-san Snow Age, we got to go see where they're storing that and all the snow. And that was my favorite part, for sure. That was great. It was... <laughs> and I'm like, I think, I, I think like, like, Timothy was like... Really? I think this is the exciting well. part for you guys? Like, yes, it's just like a bunch of snow in a room, but it was a thousand tons of snow <laughs> just laying there, and it was chilly. Not just the whole room. Like, I had pictured a, like, kind of like a silo, basically, I guess, right? Yeah, I thought like, it was just, just going like, to be, like, snow. sake in yeah. a room with snow. But it was a beautiful, like, the whole, I guess you would say campus of mm. Hakai-san Brewery is absolutely beautiful, and this specific building not only has the snow with the aging bottles, but it also has like a little store where you can buy items, and the snow is keeping the whole facility cold. They also had a meat market in there. It's like a like a like you could buy like steak, and they were keeping the steak cold with the natural cold from the snow. It was so interesting. It was so cool. It was so cool. Cool. Yeah. Ah. Um. Mm. They also had baumkuchen, which is a type of cake. Mm. It was like kind of everywhere when we were in Japan this year. But Hakai-san has their own line that they were making fresh right there. And they infused sake in a few of them, which was super cool. Very delicious. Yeah. One of them um, had the sake actually in the glaze for the... On the outside? Yeah. And then the other one, they used the uh, the sake lees uh, in, the, in the batter. And that was my favorite. It was so good. <laughs> it was amazing. <laughs> we actually yeah. bought three cakes. Yeah. And we... <laughs> Yeah, I feel like we really learned a lot. Like, it was so beautiful. And not only does the Hakai-san Brewery area have the, like, the brewery itself, but they also have restaurants there where you can eat food, like, if you go for the day. And we were able to, oh, it was so cool. We had a, yeah, we had a wonderful meal. It was beautiful, just the there mountains was a, everywhere. They have a buckwheat field where they harvest the buckwheat to make soba that goes into a restaurant that's 10 feet from the buckwheat field. And then we got to go oh, to... Didn't get, I didn't get to do that, though. It was very sad. Hakai Sound soba. itself, which is Mount Hakai, where the brewery gets its name and its water. And yeah. we got to... We got to go to where the water comes from. We got to taste cool. the water coming off the mountain. It was very nice. Yeah, it was um, fun. We had a great time. And then... So we just did that for one day, and then we went back to Tokyo yeah. for a few nights. But I think um, the, uh, my for me my big takeaway from the trip uh, was Hiroshima is awesome. That was like my oh, yeah. big takeaway from the whole trip was we had a great time. Wow, Hiroshima. Hiroshima was fantastic. We, I really loved it. We had it on our list while we were doing our little rail trip up because as I speak about all the time, we love sake from Hiroshima. So special, 
and we got to go there and visit, unfortunately, only for one day. Mm -hmm. But wow, it was awesome. We're going to fix that. And the water really is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> we went to a... It's not really an izakaya. It's just like a... It was a, well, it's sake. technically an izakaya, I guess. But it was, kind of it was like a sake a, bar. Like a, a really nice, like, upscale, like, more upscale one. Mm -hmm. And the otoshi like, that came with the seating charge was a bottle of Hiroshima mineral water. And it was so good. Was I really wanted nice. to just, like, hoard bottles of water, like, <laughs> into my suitcase and take them with me because they really do have a very special flavor. But that was only the second, third day on our trip, and we still had like multiple cities and trains to do and I was already dying like trying to lug my suitcase up and down the train steps and all it was yeah. really sad I so if you live in Hiroshima and want to ship me some water I would not be sad yeah I learned that you know the uh, that maybe doing a city every day isn't a great idea <laughs> like because every morning you wake up and you're like oh my god I gotta get in the shower I have to pack I had to get dressed. Oh, we had to be downstairs and, and checked out at 11 o'clock. <laughs> it was tough. And then you're running around with your suitcase trying to get to the train station. And so um... It was good because we never would have been able to see that many cities yeah. if we weren't doing it in that way. And we were able to get like a glimpse of each and find the cities that we love. And now we can plan longer trips there. But if you are planning a trip to Japan and that's kind of your plan, it's rough. It's really hard. By the time we got to Kyoto, which was the last, the last stage. stage, and then we went to Tokyo... Uh, kind of for the uh, end, I personally was just like exhausted. I didn't even unpack anything. I was just like, you're just, it's really tiring, really carrying it up and down the steps every day and unpacking and repacking. And it's just, it's a lot. So I think maybe two to two days, maybe at least. I think, yeah. I think that, so we, we have plans already for next year, but the following year, we're definitely going to want to go to Hiroshima for like f probably four nights. Yeah. Specifically, we want to do October in Hiroshima because we learned that they have a very special sake festival in the fall. Mm-hmm. We're going to have to do that. Because our favorite t time of year for sake is the fall. We love the Hiroshi autumn sakes. She loves the Hiroshima sakes. I'm happy to do both. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, hashtag Hiroshimi. Hiroshima. Oh, no. Yes, Hiroshima. <laughs> mm. Mm -hmm. By the way, um, somebody had joined in. Uh, Ron asked, he, he showed up a little late and was curious as to what we were drinking. So I'm just going to kind of knock that out real fast. Sure. So this is the uh, Yamamoto uh, Junmai Ginjo. It's from Akita, and it uses uh, Akita Kamari rice, and it is really delicious. Um, and then this is the Tatanokawa. Um, kind of the, it's like the Tatanyan, um, Jumai Daiginjo, it's a uh, 50% and it's a sake named after their brewery cat. We can't make this up. Um, we, and I, we have learned that strawberries go really well with the Yamamoto, um, not as well with the Tatanokawa and the cheese puffs went with neither. Yeah, I mean, okay. They're also not so just, just they're also not just cheese puffs. They're Cheetos, <laughs> white cheddar puffs. Hey, I was just so I was trying to keep it vague, you so, know. Uh, so let's see. Yeah, and when you are in Japan and drinking lots of sake, I would say my biggest tip for you, if you want to try new things and learn about new things to like, is to not be very general. Don't say what's the best sake you have. What's you know what's the most popular. I would say tell them what you have had that you like. I like sweeter things. I like drier things. Or this is the specific label that I have had that I liked. And then let them go from there. Because then I I think that in Japan they really kind of, at least always as we go, kind of take pride in like helping you find that sake. And we have multiple experiences that we look forward to where we will go to a place, request a sweet or a dry sake, get it, tell them what they think, and then they'll pick the next one that we can kind of sample and go from there. And that's so fun, and you really can learn so much about sake and learn a lot about what you might like mm -hmm. about sake. That is absolutely right. Because if you always <laughs> ask for the same thing, you're always going to get the same thing. Yeah. I Which mean, I kind of learned the hard way. I always ask, I was like, oh, I really like sweet sake. What's, what do you have that's sweet? And I got the exact same minus 20 bottle of sake every single time. Yeah. I, I was just fine. It was good. but Yeah, you did like it. But um, what I well, what happened with me a lot was I would go and I would tell them like specific sakes I liked, um, mm -hmm. and generally speaking, if you get a sake in the states, it's usually not always because there are exceptions that I'm sure you're familiar with, mm -hmm. um, but it's usually 
going to be something very big. It's going to be a big name there, and they're going to know. Mm-hmm. So you're like, oh, if I go there, I'm like, oh, I really love like Dewa Zakura. They're going to go, I got you. And yeah. they're going to give you something that, or give me something that I really like. And that's, that usually happens. And sometimes, like, they'll come at you with something that you've had before. Uh, something that they can get in America also. Every time we recognize a label that they were bringing towards us, they're like, oh, nope, and put it back on the fridge. They're like, we're not going to give this to you if you've had it before. Which I thought was very cool. It was yeah, very fun. Do not be afraid to tell them, oh, yeah, I've had that, that. Or, or let them know that you've had this sake before. Yeah. They're going to be cool about that. Yeah. Um, oh, so Ron is uh, he's really branching out. That's awesome. What yeah. kind of sake do you usually go for, yeah. Ron? Yeah, what, what is Ron like? Well, I think it's a delay, so we'll keep talking yeah. and we'll get back when we see when we hear back from. Um, Let's see. Oh. Plenty of namazake. Yeah. Oh. Oh, definitely. The, remember, remember, though, um, as we said earlier, the namas are, uh, you weren't here earlier, the namas are oh. tricky. Uh, you, it, they're very difficult to bring home. Uh, you can definitely, you know, drink them while you're there, enjoy them. They're wonderful. You're going to fall in love with them. They're yeah. just so fresh. They're almost still bubbly from being so fresh. But but you do have to be careful about bringing them home because you do have to keep them chilled or else they do start to lose their flavor a little bit. They get a little funky. Um, I mean, you, you can probably get away with it if you're careful. We brought back two namas um, that we'll be doing in future episodes. So, you know, stay tuned for that. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but by and large, like, just um, don't... Don't fall in love with the namas. You're going to be in trouble. <laughs> you're only going to break your heart. You're going to break, your, break your heart. You're going to be sad. Uh, a good term to learn is jizake, which means local sake. So, of course, you can use that word wherever you are. If you're in Tokyo, if you're in Niigata, if you're in Sapporo, Hokkaido, wherever you are, you can say, oh, jizake. And they're like, oh, oh, you know so much about sake. I'm very impressed with you. And you're like, yeah. And that's great because it works wherever you are. And it just means the local sake. Yeah. It's, and, it, and, and of course, that's a great thing to taste because it's going to be really fresh. Yeah, I mean, and it's also that's something they're going to be really proud of. Um, yeah. I find that if you go to like a sake bar or izakaya in a given city, um, Tokyo might be an exception. They're going to be very proud and happy to serve you their local stuff. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, when we were in Hiroshima, the you know the, that bar had about like a hundred and probably 120, 130 different labels. Maybe three of them were from Hiroshima. Three of 30. 30 of them yeah. were from Hiroshima. We did a live stream from there, too, if you want to go back and check it out. Yeah, we had a live stream where we drank Jiyundai. <laughs> and so we did nothing to do with Hiroshima at all. No, we were just we like other Hiroshima stuff, too. No, no, all we did was drink Jiyundai. We talked about episode, drinking Jiyundai, yeah, and then we drank true. Jiyundai. On the episode, that's true. Ron says he likes everything. So you're going to be right, very Ron, happy. All right, you're going to have a good time. <laughs> Where, uh, when you get a chance to, to, to respond to us, uh, tell us where you're going to be in Tokyo. We'll let, let you know what our, our picks are. Oh, yeah. sorry, where, I'm sorry, where in Japan? Sorry, in my head, I'm like, Tokyo, yes. Um, Another fun thing to do is going to Konbini's and buying their like cheaper one cups. Because you will be surprised. <laughs> uh, spoiler alert for the tasting video we told you about earlier, uh, which you can find on Instagram and Facebook if you're just joining us. We did... 100 yen, which is like a dollar, weird tasting chips and popcorn snacks, and we paired it with some of the sake that we had collected on our trip. Two of those were like one cups made out of cardboard that we had bought in train stations for like five, six dollars. And another one was like a really nice one, which I can never say the name properly. Uh, I probably not, I am probably also not saying it properly. Let's see, a Hayakujuru. This one. In Japanese, it means 110. The Very, labels all look yeah. like this, but, so we, but with different colors. So we paired a nicer one with just the box from the, from the convenience store, and one of the boxes really surprised us. Yeah, it's... Um, it was... Don't tell them which one it was. they got to watch the video. Well, no, no, no. We put that on the Instagram. We said who the winner was. We said what the winning we said, you was. Said, you said, recommend. Well, if you want to know which one it is, got to go to the Instagram. All right, fine. Look at the Instagram. And you'll see. The sake notes. All right, so Ron is going to be spending 10 days in Tokyo, three days in Osaka, and five days. That is a long <gasps> wow! trip. I am jealous. Those That's are five awesome. places. Yeah. Um, so, all right, so number one, when you're in uh, Kyoto, go to the Jam Hostel. Um, it's Jam Sake Bar slash Hostel. You don't have to stay there. You can just drink. Um, the, they speak really good English. They have a great sake selection, and the guy really knows. They have a lot of local sake too. Yeah. Um, G sake. Yeah. Also, while you're in the neighborhood, if you want a more high end experience, you can go to uh, Sake Caliente. Uh, that is, it's in a hotel uh, bar. I will send you the details on that. Like I said, it's a little bit more premium, 
but it's a it's a much more uh, interesting experience, I think. Um, it's with Chizuko, who is doing a lot of stuff here in New York. Yep. So she yeah, she is really kind of I would say pioneering the hot sake scene, especially in New York. Especially New York, she's the she is she's the, the hot sake queen. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> She's the Kansake master. And, you know, I think a lot of times when people think of hot sake, they think of, like, a lower-end sake that is warm, but Chiz has really helped us understand about how warming sake can bring out the flavors of higher-end sake as well. Totally. And she has opened up her own oh. little bar. Restaurant? It's not a restaurant. It's a bar. No, it's, 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 okay, it's okay. She, All right, so here's the thing. Um, for the most part... In Japan, if there's drinks, there's food. There's little snacks. There's, there's a there's a certain comfort mm-hmm. that uh, that in, in Japanese culture uh, is associated with eating while you're drinking. They don't usually just drink. Uh, it's very unusual to see a place where you only drink. Usually, mm-hmm. you're going to be having food and drinks, and that's completely fine. Uh, but you'll see a lot of it. So hers, it's got the food and the drinks, but it's really focusing on like warming sake. And like warming higher end sake, so yep. it's a really great experience, and I think we've learned so much about how like the same sake tastes completely different, cold or warm. So if you're oh yeah near, <laughs> it's if you're in Kyoto, stop by for sure. I would say yeah, definitely. The name of it again? Uh, sake caliente. If you know some Spanish, that's hot sake. Uh, <laughs> really cool. And also jam, uh, also J-A-M. really nice. J J A M jam hostel is really nice. Um, and in Tokyo. Oh, well, how much time do we have? I, I mean, don't know. <laughs> I think we've done a lot of posts on Facebook and the blog about cool places. Karan Sake Market, we have talked about a lot, and we did an interview. That's where you can go for, I think it's 60, it's like 6,000 yen? 3,000 uh, 3, yen. 3,000 3, yen. yen. And it's all you can drink standing bar, and they have just tons. How many? Like a hundred? Twenty? Well, usually one hundred, um, and they're very small breweries, so it's not going to be anybody you've heard of. That's the interesting part. And it's from all spectrums. <laughs> it's sweet, dry, floral, like all over the place. And they have like worksheets with the names of all the sake and the stats about them. The different types are kind of color coded with like a. So if you don't really speak any Japanese, you can still learn from the experience. But of course, if you do speak Japanese, you'll learn a lot more. Um, but you can just go up and you get your little tasting cup and you can like pour for yourself, taste it, go back to your table, you know, take your notes, decide if you liked that style, that, that like color coding, and go from there. And you can just stay as long as you want. Right. And that's a, so it's a Kurand sake market. And they have locations like all over Tokyo now. They have one in Shibuya, they have it in uh, Shinjuku, they have one in uh, Akasaka. Um, Ikebukuro is their original location, uh, but yeah, it's Kurand with a K, Kurand, uh, and then, and it's a good idea to get on their website and make a reservation. Yes. Uh, we made the mistake uh, last week of not making a reservation. We couldn't get in. The first times that we went, they were still new, so we had no problem, <laughs> but they've blown up, and now you need a reservation. Yeah. But um, you can bring your own food as well. You can go in. Start you to... should bring your own food. Yeah, and then if you want to, like while you're there and then you decide you're hungry, you can get a stamp and leave and then come back. It's amazing. Uh, and that's in Tokyo. There's right. the Quran. Right. Um, also, I would say um, go to if you're near Ginza and it's the daytime, go to Sake no Ana. Oh. Sake no Ana opens at 11 a.m. And so if you're jet lagged, it's a great <laughs> place to go. <laughs> yeah. Um, they open at 11 a.m. It's Sake no Ana. It translates vaguely into like liquor cellar, like as in like the basement like liquor basement, and they have a wonderful sake selection, like really fantastic selection. It's a nicer place, so, um, you know, you don't want to wear, like, shorts. And... Yeah, do not do not wear flip-flops to... <laughs> but it's not super yeah. nice, but you definitely want to dress nicer. Uh, you, they speak pretty good English, but if you speak Japanese, that would be much more helpful. I think you'll get a lot, you'll get a bit more of the experience if you know some pleasantries, kind of, just anything that you can offer, I think will help your experience. And if you can express to them that you're that you're there and you're serious about sake, they're going to help you out a lot. They they're going to so guide much. you. Yeah. Um, we've done a post about this one as well. We yeah. were just there and we love it. I think it's we've wonderful. gone every year for like. Three, I, it's four a years. Gr- it's a wonderful place. It's a it's a unique experience, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's, it's go definitely go there if you can. Oh, Kyoto. Just, Are we allowed to talk about not sake? 
You can talk about Nasaki. Okay. Sure. Nasaki in uh, Kyoto. Yeah, I want more of this one. Okay. Uh, Nasaki in Kyoto is a Chuhai bar called Sour. <laughs> and Chuhai is shochu? Yeah. Chuhai is a shochu cocktail. It means a, it's a, it's shortened. It's um, chu. It's a shochu. Oh, yeah. So it's high, high ball. Sorry, Tehran, yes. The Saka no Ana, the kind of nicer place, is in Ginza. And that is a great place for what we were talking about earlier. We're giving them a flavor profile or a sake that you like and letting them take over. They do tasting sets. They do sets. And not That's only do important. they do sets, but she, well, we, we've always kind of had the same person, but they write down the name in English for us and also in Japanese of each one so that you can see it and remember it and like try to buy it later if you like from like a, a department store. Mm -hmm. And Karand Sake Market, which is the all you can drink standing bar, is all, all over, over Tokyo. All so over just Tokyo. kind of Google Go to Kurand.jp and you'll find them. Yeah, so depending on where you're staying or where you're gonna be, you can go to kind of wherever. They all have different sakes that they're offering for the most part. I mean they, they probably have some similarities, but kind of different. And make sure you make a reservation. And then the hot sake that we were speaking about, sake caliente, is in Kyoto. It's in Kyoto, right. And um, I also, like, while we're kind of chatting about that, I want to mention uh, kind of um, one other place in Tokyo. Come pie with people. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we should really be doing yeah, that. Yeah, we ask people to come and join us and drink with us. So if you're drinking with us, come pie. I feel bad because, like, we're, originally we were like, oh, yeah, we're going to, like, get into a thing where we tell people what we're going to be drinking and then they can drink with us. And, like, well, now we have a bunch of stuff that, that, we, that nobody else can drink. Sorry. And that's really sad. Yeah. Um, but so what else? In, oh, I would say. Oh, oh. Don Jaka. Don Jaka. <laughs> All right. So this is, this is, this is complicated. All right, so if you, if you are in Shinjuku and it's late and you don't want to go home yet. They're open until 5 in the morning? I think it's 4, but it's close. What time do they open? I don't know. Like 9, 7? 6. six. Kind of the evening-ish. 7-ish. Yeah. Um, so you don't really go there for dinner, though. You go there, like, late. <laughs> like, yeah, it's an after. Like midnight. Yeah, it's like the, it's the Nijikai location. So, <laughs> it's the after party. Yeah, location. after party. Um, and... But in Shinjuku... In Shinjuku. Now, there are several donjakas, so if you just Google donjaka, you may come up with multiple hits. And that's D-O-N-J-A-C-A. -A. Yeah. Um, on the west side of the train station, there is one donjaka on, in Nishi Shinjuku. And it is right by the first kitchen. There which... used to be a giant clock there. If you've been before, you probably know exactly what we're talking about. Yeah. But, spoiler alert, the... The clock is gone. The clock is gone! I don't know why. Uh, the first kitchen is still there. There's just no, no clock. The first kitchen is still there. Like half the size it used to be. That probably is why they lost the clock. But you could also probably just Google first kitchen Shinjuku clock and then like <laughs> find out where it is and then go there. Um, so yeah, so Donjaka is a, is a tiny little um, late night izakaya. Like down the steps. Down the steps. It is, I'm going to warn you right now, very smoky. It's kind of where like the salarymen go after work, or where the, the salarymen go after the train shut down. There's a lot of like home. there's a lot of like dates, but like their third stop for the night, <laughs> or if you miss the train because in Japan the trains shut down at, at midnight at night, until five in the morning. This is a place to go to hang out until the trains start again. So it's very I don't know. It's very authentic. It's oh, very yeah. fun. But the point is, oh, they have great food. Everything is in completely in Japanese, even the prices. <laughs> but, um... Thanks, thanks to the magic of Google Translate, yeah, you can you, totally you can, translate it. Yeah, so you would definitely need that if you go. But the owner, the manager, of this particular donjaka knows his sake. And he gets the greatest stuff. He gets really good stuff. And, you know, like, people are going to say, oh, but what about blah, 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 where they have, like, a hundred bottles? Yes. Those guys totally know what they're doing also. Um, but for a late night place <laughs> that's in like a basement and a tiny smoky room in Shinjuku, 
His sake selection is outstanding. And they have a pretty great variety. Like, depending on what you ask for, they know their sake, they know what they have, and they can give you something that you're asking for. And they have multiple of each type, which I like because I'll have one and then I'll want to try something else, and they'll have something else similar, mm -hmm. which is always nice. Right. And it's not a huge selection, but it's, it's a... It's a high quality selection. It's they get some like small batch stuff. A couple of years ago, you had the one that you totally loved. It was like it's our my white whale. I can't last night there. <laughs> and John asked him like, "Where can I buy this? This sake is absolutely amazing. Like this is the sake that my heart has been searching for. Like I didn't even know." And the manager was like, "No, you can't. They only make like fifty bottles a year. So <laughs> sorry." And I felt like th I think he was kind of hesitant to give you like your second glass. He was like, mm, "We're kind of rash." Like. Mm. This yeah. is like the only one that we're gonna get. It was really good though. So it's pretty cool. Definitely check it out. It's pretty smoky though, and you do need to know some Japanese or have some sort of translation option available for you. Also, you need to convince them that you're gonna eat because they yeah. will because not. He they're not that, happy about it. He doesn't it want people gonna... to just come and get drunk. He wants you to like eat a little bit. Like uh, they have like uh, finger foods and that kind of thing. Oh like, yeah, really good stuff. Fries. Right. Try the cheesy bread. It's really good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I think on that note, we're going to call us for the night. We've been, yeah. we plan to do this for maybe like 20 minutes today. We're at like the 50 minute mark. So, oh my gosh, sorry guys. Yeah, um, sorry. Thank you, thank you for listening to us babble, um, but we really appreciate it. Um, and, so, in conclusion, in conclusion, that is our notes on the tasting of these two sakes. Yeah, and also kind of like what we've been up to as far as um, our trip to Japan. Um, I'm sure that in future episodes we're gonna have a lot more to talk about with regard to that. Yeah. And also, uh, you know, we we since we've come back, we've already been to a, a fun little tasting event that we'll probably talk about in the future. Oh, yeah, you'll have to check that out later. Yeah. So. And uh, again, um, this um, yeah, secret Brooklyn Kura cups because these guys are awesome, and uh, you, when they get their sake out there, you guys need to try it. Yeah. So, this has been the live sake notes. It is the live. We'll catch you next time. We will. And if you are interested in most of the things that we talked about, you can kind of go up to Instagram, on Facebook, YouTube, and kind of search around and find more information about all the different places that we mentioned. Right. And, and if you have questions for us, you can message us on all, all those uh, platforms. All those also. options. And if you still use email, you can still get us at uh, info at thesakenotes.com. And if you like what you see, uh, if you want to hit the subscribe button so you'll be notified the next time we go live or post something. And especially on YouTube, that helps because once we reach a certain amount of followers, we can get our own like URL, yeah. which will help us for linking to the videos in the future. So. Yeah, it's a real pain in the ass to use YouTube when you don't and have we can't a lot really, of followers. We have to go live only on Facebook because we don't have enough followers to go live on YouTube. So if you subscribe, yeah. that'll be really helpful. Uh, thanks, Ron. I hope you had a good time. And uh, Tony, thanks for joining us. Sorry you got here at Sorry the very end. Sorry I missed end. it. Yeah. But there's plenty of archive footage, I guess. There is a lot of archive yeah. footage. Once you see the archive, you'll see us drunk in Japan. You'll oh, enjoy geez. it, I hope. Anyway. We'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. <laughs> Kanpai. Kanpai. i got to find the off button now. Oh, my goodness. I'm just going to get up and do that over there. All right, well, I'm going to have some of these strawberries. Yes, you should. Hey, Yamamoto is so good, right? This is definitely my favorite.